Okay, in this particular lesson, what we're going to be looking at doing is solving quadratic equations by using what's called the quadratic formula. Uh, the quadratic formula states that if you have a quadratic equation in standard form, so ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero, then the solutions for x are equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, all over a denominator of 2 times a. Um, my suggestion is to just put this product for a c in brackets just because we're less likely to make mistakes when we get into some problem solving. All right, so in this uh, first problem, we're just going to look at three different problems and, and how it applies uh, to get to our solutions. Our first problem says to solve this problem and express our solutions as exact roots in simplest form, so not to use decimals. Uh, as you can see, this is already in standard form. Uh, so what I'm going to do is substitute my value for a, substitute 1, uh, b is negative 10, and c is 19. Okay, so I'm going to substitute those values in uh, to this quadratic formula and then just simplify it as much as possible. Uh, so for this, our solutions are x is equal to, to negative, negative 10, uh, plus or minus the square root of negative 10 squared minus, and I'm going to put the product in brackets of 4 times 1 times 19 uh, all over my denominator of 2 times 1. So as I simplify this slowly, I will get to x is equal to 10 plus or minus the square root of negative 10 squared is 100 minus, and the product of 4 times 1 times 19 is 76, all over a denominator of 2. As I simplify what's under the radical, I have x is equal to 10 plus or minus the square root of 24 all over 2. Uh, this represents uh, our solutions, uh, but we can make this and put this into simpler form uh, if we make the entire radical into a mixed radical. If we were to do a factor tree with 24, we have 2 times 12, and 12 is 2 times 6, and 6 is 2 times 3. So another way to rewrite 12, if we want to make this a mixed radical, or sorry, 24, is the square root of 24 could also be written as the square root of 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. And this pair of 2's, when I take the square root of a pair of 2's, I get a single 2. So this will leave me with 2 root 2 times 3, which is 2 root 6. So a simpler form is x is equal to 10 plus or minus 2 root 6 all over a denominator of 2. And this can still be made even more simple if we realize that uh, each of 10 and 2 root 6 can be divided by 2. Uh, 10 over 2 simplifies to 5, and 2 root 6 over 2 simplifies to just root 6. So this, our simplest form in exact root, is x is equal to 5 plus or minus the square root of 6. Uh, in our next problem, what we're going to be doing uh, is solving but expressing our solution to the nearest hundredth. If you want to pause this and try it yourself to get to the answers, uh, you are right ahead. The first thing that we notice here is that this is not in standard form yet. We need to make one side equal to zero. Uh, so standard form will be 3x squared plus 4x minus 5 is equal to zero. And now I'll substitute uh, a is equal to 3, b is equal to 4, and c is equal to negative 5 into this function, or into this quadratic formula, I should say. Uh, we'll get x is equal to negative 4 uh, plus or minus the square root of 4 squared minus, and in brackets, the product of 4 times a, which is 3, times c, which is negative 5. Okay. Uh, all over a common denominator, or a, a denominator, I should say, not common denominator, of 2 times 3. Uh, so as I simplify this, I get x is equal to negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 minus, and that product there, uh, 4 times 3 times negative 5 is negative 60, 
all over a denominator of 6, which gives us solutions of negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 76 all over 6. Uh, this represents two answers, and since we're um, asked to solve this to the nearest hundredth, uh, we can do this next step on our calculators right now. We could simplify more if we'd like to, uh, but the two answers that this represents are when, negative, when it's negative 4 plus the square root of 76 all over 6, and if we take the negative or the minus into account, the other solution is negative 4 minus the square root of 76 all over 6. Uh, the thing that we need to be careful of here, we'll get the wrong answer if we don't know how to use our calculators. If you do negative 4 plus root 76 divided by 6, this solution here is actually incorrect uh, because what we have to do and what you should realize is that this numerator here has to be calculated first. You could do it in one step on your calculator by putting it in brackets and then dividing by 6, uh, or you could do it in two steps by just calculating the numerator and then dividing by 6. Totally up to you. I'll show you both ways. Uh, if I do this in one step, I should be making this in brackets, negative 4 plus the square root of 76, and make an end bracket there and then divide by 6. That's one way to get the correct solution. Uh, the other way is to do the numerator, negative 4 plus root 76, hit equals, and then divide by the denominator of 6. Either way, I get 0 0.79. So one of our solutions is 0 0.79. And our other solution, uh, I'm going to, for the green solution here, is calculate the numerator first, negative 4 minus the square root of 76, hit equals, and then divide by the denominator of 6, and I get negative 2.12. You'll see at the end of this lesson that what I'm going to do is check all of these solutions with my graphing calculator. Uh, in our last example, we're just going to do one more. Uh, you'll see why in just a second. <clears throat> we are asked again to solve this problem, and as you'll see, it is not in standard form. So to put it into standard form, subtract 7x and make sure that you have the terms in the right order. So we have 0 is equal to uh, 2x squared minus 7x plus 9. So again, we're going to substitute. 2 in for a, negative 7 in for b, and 9 in for c. Okay, So we're going to have here x is equal to negative, negative 7 plus or minus the square root of negative 7 squared minus in brackets the product 4 times a which is 2 times c which is 9 all over the denominator of 2 times a, which is 2. Uh, in this particular case, as I start simplifying, we will notice something. I have 7 plus or minus the square root of 49 minus, and this product here, 4 times 2 times 9, is 72. And that's all over a denominator of Four. So we have x is equal to 7 plus or minus the square root of negative 23 all over 4. If you try to calculate these on your calculator, you will get an error. I'll talk about why in just a second. Uh, but if I try to do 7 plus the square root of negative 23 and hit equals, I get an answer or an error because it's not real. Uh, the issue here is you are not allowed, if you get a negative under the radical sign, uh, you cannot square root a negative. So in this particular case, there will be no solutions. Uh, let's check all of our solutions with a graphing calculator. Uh, if I go back up to this first example, let me show you kind of what our solutions would be here. Okay, uh, This first graph. Uh, 5 minus the square root of 6, or 5 plus, I should say, the square root of 6 is about uh, 5 plus 2.5, so roughly 7.5, which you can see here. And also 5 minus the square root of 6 is roughly 5 minus 2.5, which is 2.5. So those are the two x-intercepts. Uh, for our next example, we will see if we get it correct. Uh, so for our second example, if I show you where these intercepts are, 
if I hit graph here, you'll see that our intercepts are at roughly negative 2.1 and positive 0 0.79. So that's correct. And if we look at our final solution on our graphing calculator, you'll see that if I graph the standard form function, what happens is the reason there's no solution is because there are absolutely no x-intercepts. So we can verify all these solutions with our graphing calculator.